In this video, we're going to be working through three examples of solving linear homogeneous second order ODEs with constant coefficients. As you can see on the screen, there are three possible cases that can occur with this type of problem and what case we get will determine which process we need to take to solve it. Let's do an example. Here we have a second order linear homogeneous ODE with constant coefficients, so we can use the characteristic equation method. Step one is to write the characteristic equation. Here we assume the solution takes the form of e to the lambda x, and we multiply this with our characteristic equation. So the coefficient in front of y double prime is multiplied by lambda squared, the coefficient in front of y prime is multiplied by lambda, and the coefficient in front of y just becomes the constant. So we're sort of turning the original ODE into a polynomial. Now, because e to the lambda x can't ever be zero, this just implies that lambda squared plus three lambda minus 10 equals zero. This is also known as the characteristic polynomial or the characteristic equation. Now we want to find lambda. So we can either factor or use the quadratic equation. Here we can just factor and we'll find that lambda one equals minus five and lambda two equals two. So we're working with the first case where lambda one does not equal lambda two and both are real numbers. Now recall at the start that we assumed our solution takes the form of e to the lambda x. We have two lambdas and because our ODE is linear and homogeneous and our two solutions in this case will always be linearly independent, then we can use the superposition principle to write the general form of the solution as y of x equals c1 e to the lambda x plus c2 e to the lambda 2 x for some constant c1 and c2. So our general solution will be c1 e to the minus 5 x plus c2 e to the 2 x. And that's our general solution. Let's try a different example. Again, we have a second order linear homogeneous ODE with constant coefficients, so we can use the characteristic equation method. Now we do the same thing as last time, which is to write the characteristic equation. Again, e to the lambda x cannot equal zero, so we're left with lambda squared plus two lambda plus 10 equals zero. To find lambda, we need to use the quadratic equation, which I'm sure everyone knows by heart. Using this method, we now get complex numbers for our two solutions, lambda 1 and lambda 2. We get minus 1 plus 3i and minus 1 minus 3i. Using lambda 1 and lambda 2, we can write the general solution. We get y equals c1 e to the minus 1 plus 3i of x plus c2 e to the minus 1 minus 3i x for some constant c1 and c2. But leaving complex numbers in our solution isn't very nice to work with. So we need to rewrite this into a form consisting of only real numbers using Euler's identity. E to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now we have to rewrite both lambda 1 and lambda 2 using Euler's identity. Notice that e to the minus 1 plus 3i x can also be written as e to the minus x times e to the 3i x. And then using Euler's identity, this can further be rewritten as e to the minus x times cosine of 3x plus i sine of 3x. And for lambda 2, we can do the same thing. e to the minus 1 minus 3i x can be rewritten as e to the minus x times e to the minus 3i x, which using Euler's identity just equals e to the minus x times cosine of minus 3x plus i sine of minus 3x. Now we can put this in the form of the general solution as before. So we get y equals c1 e to the minus x times cosine 3x plus i sine of 3x plus c2 e to the minus x times cosine of minus 3x plus i sine of minus 3x. Now we can use the fact that cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function. So we can rewrite this further as y equals c1 e to the minus x times cosine of 3x plus i sine of 3x plus c2 e to the minus x cosine of 3x 
minus i sine of 3x. Now we can group real and imaginary terms. Here, I'm just expanding everything and then I'll regroup the cosine and the i sine terms. Now we can let some constant d1 equal c1 plus c2 and some other constant d2 equals c1 minus c2. And this gives us d1 e to the minus x cosine of 3x plus d2 i e to the minus x sine of 3x. But notice we still have an imaginary term i in there. Well, we can actually just drop this because d1 and d2 aren't restricted to just being real numbers. So essentially d2 could be some constant divided by i. The solution actually works the same. So now our final solution is d1 e to the minus x cosine of 3x plus d2 e to the minus x sine of 3x for some constants d1 and d2. Let's do one more example. Like before, this is a linear homogeneous second order ODE with constant coefficients, so we can use the characteristic equation method. The first step is to write the characteristic equation. Here we have lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4 equals 0. Notice that if we factor this, we get a repeated root where lambda equals 2. So we essentially have only one solution because e to the lambda 1x and e to the lambda 2x aren't linearly independent. In fact, they're the same. So what we need is two solutions that are linearly independent. Well, it just so happens that if we multiply e to the lambda x by x, we will get a second linearly independent solution. So our final solution in this case is y equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2 x e to the 2x for some constants c1 and c2. And here is a summary of our three possible cases. We first write the characteristic equation and find lambda 1 and lambda 2 by either factoring or using the quadratic equation. If lambda 1 doesn't equal lambda 2, then the general solution is simply y equals c1 e to the lambda 1 x plus c2 e to the lambda 2 x for some constants c1 and c2. If lambda is a complex number, in other words, a real number plus or minus another real number multiplied with i, then the solution is just y equals c1 e to the r1 x cosine r2 of x plus c2 e to the r1 of x times sine of r2 of x. And if we get a repeated root, so lambda one equals lambda two, then our general solution is y equals c1 e to the lambda one x plus c2 x e to the lambda one x. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, then feel free to subscribe. I make regular videos on calculus, linear algebra, statistics, psychology, and physics. As always, thanks for watching.